Hello everybody, last time I told you a little bit about ignition of uh, APU on A320 and today I would like to tell you a little bit about the uh, APU itself and about uh, every component which you can find on the APU. So let's take a look at it. And we are going to talk about Pratt & Whitney APS 3200. What are the dimensions? It is quite small. Its height is 76 cm, it is 85 cm wide and 125 cm long. It weighs around 140 kg, output shaft horsepower is 536, 100% rotor speed is around 49,300 rpm, fuel consumption is around 150 kg per hour, it is able to produce 42 psi of pressure and its electric output is 90 kilovolt amperes. That was few basic information and now let's take a look on each part. And we can start with part which actually provide power for the whole unit and that's engine itself. Uh, here we have an intake and from the intake the air goes into the one stage radial compressor from where it goes to the combustion chamber which you can see all the way around here and on it you can see fuel nozzles and they are all around uh, the fuel comes from a manifold which is up here and from there it comes from the uh, fuel control unit on which we'll look a little bit later uh, then we have an ignition, uh, ignition system on it uh, and uh, on combustion chamber we have two igniter plugs which you can find one over here and one here. As I said before I made video about uh, ignition system and how to replace igniter plugs so if you want to take a look link is uh, somewhere up here and of course I'll leave it in the description below and let's continue from uh, combustion chamber we continue with the two-stage axial uh, turbine which you can find over here and then we have a silencer all the way back which is part of exhaust exhaust is over there on the end yep so uh, that was basically the engine itself and now let's move to the part which uh, is interesting for the uh, APU operations the, uh, why we actually have the APU on the aircraft and we can start with the compressor which is up here so intake uh, provide air for engine itself and for compressor which is again radial type that air is used for uh, starting of the engines the, and of course it provides air for the air conditioning system that air is controlled by a bleed control valve which you can find over here and it have a possibility to deliver the air or ditch the air overboard into the exhaust then the second important part of the IPU is provide electricity and for that we have here this huge generator and I made separate video about uh, the generator but let me tell you a little bit about it it provides uh, 115 volts AC and uh, 400 Hertz and uh, electricity is delivered through those four cables which you can see up there uh, from there we can move to down here this is oil tank and of course inside we can find a oil pump and here we have two oil filters down here uh, so it lubricates the whole gearbox on which you can find all those components since the oil of course get hot we have a oil 
uh, cooler, which is all the way up here. Uh, it is cooled by air, by this fan, but we'll get to that one a little bit later. So well, it goes from the gearbox to the cooler and then back to the gearbox. Inside it will pass through the pressure filter so we know that oil is clean and this cold oil will be delivered to the aft and forward bearing and of course to each component into the gearbox to lubricate these components and then oil is returned back to the oil tank. But let's go back to our cooler. Whenever uh, the air pass through the oil uh, heat exchanger, the air is ditched overboard through this duct outside. Uh, as I said, there is a cooler, which we can find over here. This is the fan about which we've been talking about. And uh, it has two functions. It cools the oil and of course through the pipe on the top it cools down also the compartment and where the air is coming from we need to go on the other side where the duct leads and as you can see it sucked air from the inlet compartment and which means that it sucks cooled air from the outside so that's the function of the fan, but it have uh, one other function. Whenever you remove this duct, there is a, you can see the fan, but through the fan, uh, we are uh, rotating manually the APU itself for boroscopes or for some inspections. You can use uh, the connection, which is uh, behind this duct. There is uh, another type of the APU and on that, that one you can rotate through the starter. And since we're talking about starter, it's over here. And starter of course is here to start APU. So whenever we press start button in the cockpit, starter will be powered by 28 volt DC through the contactor and it will provide rotation to the APU shaft through the gearbox. Whenever APU reach 55%, ECB de-energize ignition and the starter, because from this point APU is able to accelerate without help. And since gearbox speed is higher than speed of starter, clutch module will disengage the starter. From underneath we can find fuel control unit, about which we've been talking about before. Uh, that one provides the fuel for the fuel nozzles as we saw before and as well it provides uh, muscle power for the bleed control valve you can see pipes here and they lead uh, into the fuel control unit fuel control unit has one more function and that is to operate inlet guidewains actuator this actuator modulates position of the inlet guidewains and that way we can control amount of the air which gets to the compressor and that way into the bleed system. Of course we can completely close it and that way we'll stop bleed function. Of course down here you can find filter for the fuel and the fuel line is here and it leads inside behind this firewall. Uh, let me just move a bit and of course APU have its own uh, fuel pump but about it maybe next time but what's interesting on this firewall is this hole right here and if you can see it yeah now you can see it through this hole or this hole leads to the fire bottle and uh, what is it good for? Well, basically, whenever we have a fire in the APU compartment, it releases the fire agent in this compartment and hopefully it stops the fire itself. So that this is good for. It leads behind this wall, this is firewall, and there the bottle sits somewhere here in this section. And then it leads us to 
something what is called fire loop and it starts here again on the firewall and it goes through the whole APU compartment as you can see there and all the way back what are these file loops good for well basically they uh, provide us with the information if there is a fire or over temperature in the APU compartment and how it works basically inside you have a sealed uh, gas and uh, it is a basically pressure sensor whenever temperature raise in the APU compartment uh, the pressure in the in the fire loop raise as well and when it reach certain pressure it will trigger either overheat or fire alarm so that is it good for and then we got the fire alarm in the cockpit and then we can release the fire agent from the bottle the bottle is uh, pressurized with nitrogen and on the bottle is electropyrotechnic cartridge which will penetrate the plug and that will release the agent into the compartment uh, with a certain pressure thanks to that nitrogen. Then uh, it will lead us to the, let's say, last equipment and that's this duct. This duct lead the air into the intake of the of the APU through this hole in the fuselage you can see door down here uh, this door have as well actuator behind the firewall and when you want to start the APU those door will open and it allows air to get into the APU through the duct into the APU inlet okay that's more or less all what I want to tell you about the APU if you have any questions please write them down in the comments below and as always I'll try to answer them as soon as possible uh, thank you for your time my name is Tomasz this was Aircraft Maintenance with Zetor and I'll see you next one bye